Hello everybody, today we would be understanding the concept of national treatment under the general agreements to tariffs and trade. The objectives of this paper would be to understand the concept of national treatment and the significance of the same in liberalizing and further achieving the goals of international trade policy as regulated by the World Trade Organization. We would also analyze the concept and significance of national treatment and throw light on the scope and impact of the concepts of like products vis-a-vis -vis directly substitutable or competitive products. The topics discussed would be to understand the evolution of the national treatment, the significance of the national treatment provision, the bearing of Article 3 of the GATT on internal taxes and internal charges. We would then understand what is meant by internal taxes and charges and also what is the meaning of the phrase in excess of. There apart, we would understand the concept of like products vis-a-vis -vis directly competitive or substitutable products. We would understand the concept of directly competitive or substitutable products. We would also understand what Article 3, Clause 4 and its bearing to regulatory measures in the form of laws, requirements and regulations. What are internal quantitative regulations? The exceptions to paragraph 5 and the allocation among external sources of supply means. We would also understand what government procure procurement is as an exception to the principle of national treatment in the GATT 1947. The principle of national treatment is expressed in Article 3 of the GATT 1947 and is one of the core principles of the GATT and the international trade regime. Like the term suggests, the principle endeavours to provide equal treatment to goods that originate or are being exported by foreign countries and like domestic goods. What is the difference between national treatment and the most favoured nation treatment of the GATT? Where on the one hand, the principle of most favoured nation endeavours to provide equal treatment to like products or goods belonging to member nations inter se, the principle of national treatment tells to provide equal treatment to like goods of foreign nations vis-a-vis -vis domestic goods. Now we would understand the scope of national treatment in the GATT. The national treatment principle elucidated in the GATT reads that contracting parties recognize that internal taxes and other internal charges and laws, regulations and requirements affecting the international internal sale, offering for sale, purchase, transportation, distribution or use of products and internal quantitative regulations requiring the mixture, processing or use of products in specified amounts or proportions should not be applied to imported or domestic products so as to afford protection to domestic production. The significance of this principle is that national treatment endeavours to prohibit discrimination both in the forms of de jure and de facto discrimination between domestic and imported goods and services that are like. In essence, the principle of national treatment seeks to promote trade liberalization. With this, the principle of national treatment sought to provide tariff concessions to countries in general as against limiting them to countries that had negotiated for the same. 
Now we would understand the mandate of this principle. The national treatment principle entails to improve the conditions of competition in the market and any protectionism afforded to imported production shall directly hamper the conditions of competition. Prejudices against goods that are not locally made are considered to be unfair trade practices with the principle of national treatment ensuring that free trade is fair and fair trade is free. Now we would understand the prevention of discrimination and the principle of national treatment. The principle of national treatment seeks to ensure that imported goods are not subjected to any discrimination in the country of importation by ways of measures either in the form of internal taxes or internal charges and laws, regulations and requirements are not applied in such a manner so as to afford protection to domestic production. What is the bearing of Article 3 of the GATT on internal taxes and internal charges? The terms internal taxes and internal charges refer to the taxes and charges applied by means of a governmental measure once the goods in question have crossed the boundary and entered the jurisdiction of the importing nation. Therefore, internal taxes refer to the taxes applied once the imported goods have entered the boundary of the importing nation and taxes need to be levied for the sale of the good. For instance, applied taxes, specific taxes and ad valorem taxes are common examples of internal taxes. At the same time, service tax and value added tax of VAT is also a common example of taxes. On the other hand, internal taxes or rather internal charges are the charges applied for the sale, purchase, transportation or storage of the imported good in the jurisdiction of the importing nation. Now we would understand what is the scope of Article 3 Clause 2 of the GATT 1947? The principle of national treatment set forth in Article 3 of the agreement forming the GATT states that internal taxes and internal charges shall not be so applied to imported products so as to be in excess directly or indirectly of domestic products. And also these shall not afford protection to like domestic goods. Now we will understand the first sentence of Article 3, Clause 2. The first part of Paragraph 2 is the first sentence which states that the products of the territory of any contracting party imported into the territory of any other contracting party shall not be subject directly or indirectly to internal taxes or other internal charges of any kind in excess of those applied directly or indirectly to like domestic products. What is the meaning of the phrase in excess of? The first question is whether the products in question are like. The concept of like products with reference to the principle of national treatment set in Article 3 of the GATT 1947 is similar to that in the most favoured nation treatment set in Article 1 of the GATT elucidated in the previous module. However, for the purpose of the discussion of this module, the concept would be discussed in brief again. The second question is whether like products which are like imported products in particular 
are being internally taxed or internally charged in excess of domestic products. Once it has been ascertained that the products in question are like, one must next examine whether the like products have been internally taxed or internally charged at rates in excess of that which are being charged to domestic goods. While ensuring that internal taxes or internal charges are not applied in excess, the principle of national treatment in GATT ensures that even the slightest difference in the amount of taxes makes the measure illegal. The exception of de minimis hence is not a valid exception to the principle. Internal taxes and internal charges on the other hand must be different than that applied to similar goods. The second sentence of article 3 clause 2. The second part of article 3 clause 2 states that apart from restraining the application of excess internal taxes and duties towards imported like products, no contracting party must additionally apply internal taxes or other internal charges to imported or domestic products in a manner contrary to the principles set forth in paragraph 1, that is to afford protection to domestic products. What are the connotations of article 3 clause 2? Article 3 clause 2 means that even when a contracting party has satisfactorily fulfilled the first criteria, it must in addition successfully provide that the internal taxes or internal charges have not been applied in a manner that would distort the competition in favour of the domestic production. To this effect, the panel in Argentina Hides and Leather noted that the intention of Article 3, Clause 1, the first sentence, is not to directly impact internal charges or internal taxes directly as policy measures, but rather ensure that their operation does not in any manner have a direct impact on competition between domestic or imported products. We would understand the implications of Article 3, Clause 2 with the help of the US automobiles dispute. The contentions of this case were that the question before the panel in the above mentioned dispute was whether certain products that were being imported to the United States which were above US dollars 30,000 were in any manner different to those being sold below US dollars 30,000 in order to be considered as luxury products and hence be subject to a different and higher tax. The allegations by the European Union were that in the concerned dispute, EU alleged that the US was taxing certain luxurious products such as boats, aeroplanes, fur and the like sold above the threshold limit of US dollars 30,000 at 10% in excess of the retail price and that such products were similar to or like products being sold under the said amount of US dollars 30,000. The question before the panel was that the panel was left with two primary questions to answer whether the products are like or similar and are the like products being treated differently in order to afford protection to the domestic industry. The first question. For the purpose of determining the answer to the first question, the panel referred to the criteria laid down in the border tax adjustment dis dispute which was discussed in the most favoured nation module. Therefore, the end uses, common features and physical characteristics must be taken into account 
of while determining if the products in question are alike or similar. The second question, once it has been determined that the products are similar, it must be ascertained whether the said products have been subject to an internal tax or internal charge that has been in excess of that being charged with respect to domestic products. In addition, like the second sentence of Article 3.2 mentioned, the panel and the appellate body are left to determine if and whether this excess tax or charge has been imposed for the purpose of affording protection to the domestic industry. The findings of the case. For the purpose of the US taxes on automobiles dispute, the panel held that the US conduct of imposing a higher tax for luxury products above US dollar 30,000 did not violate Article 3, Clause 2 simply because US did not impose a higher tax in order to afford protection to domestic productions and consequently distort conditions of competition in the domestic market. Now we would understand the concept of like products vis-a-vis -vis directly competitive or substitutable products. The first sentence of Article 3, Clause 2 discussed above is applicable only when the discrimination in question by means of an internal tax or internal charge is between goods that are imported and domestic and such goods are alike. In other words, the first sentence of paragraph 2 is restricted to like products. On the other hand, the second sentence of article 3 clause 2 pertains to directly competitive or substitutable products. Now we would understand what is the meaning of the add note to article 3 clause 2. The add note to article 3 clause 2 provides that a tax conforming to the requirements of the first sentence of paragraph 2 would be considered to be inconsistent with the provision of the second sentence only in cases where competition was involved between on the one hand the tax product and on the other hand a directly competitive or substitutable product which was not similarly taxed. We would understand the implications of the add note on the Japan alcoholic beverages dispute. The panel in the Japan alcoholic uh, dispute emphasized that besides the physical characteristics, common end uses and tariff classifications, the marketplace and elasticity of substitution must be identified before the goods are considered as directly competitive or substitutable. Imported goods that are alike or directly competitive or substitutable are said to be discriminated against only when they are not similarly taxed as their domestic counterparts. The rationale behind this dissimilar taxation should then be proved to be applied in such a manner so as to afford protection and hamper competitive conditions in the market. Article 3, Clause 4 and its bearing to regulatory measures in the form of laws, requirements and regulations. Article 3, Clause 4 of the GATT provides that the products of the territory of any contracting party imported into the territory of any other contracting party shall be accorded treatment no less favourable than that accorded to like products of national origin in respect of all laws, regulations and requirements affecting their internal sale, offering for sale, purchase, transportation, distribution or use. The provisions of this paragraph shall not prevent 
the application of differential internal transportation charges which are based exclusively on the economic operation of the means of transport and not on the nationality of the product. We would understand the implication of article 3 paragraph 4 and the US gasoline dispute. The US gasoline provisions are that the law under the dispute in this case was the US Clean Air Act 1963 that aimed at controlling pollution and thus improving the environment. For this purpose, the act segregated the areas and identified nine areas that had severe pollution. Consequently, it directed that only reformulated gasoline could be sold in these localities. In localities that did not face such high pollution levels, conventional gasoline could continue to be sold. The problem was that for the purpose of selling the latter, the producers had to ensure that it was as clean as it was in the year 1990. To that end, the year 1990 was the baseline to which both conventional and reformulated gasoline was supposed to be compared to in the future. For the purpose of comparison, a domestic refiner that operated for a minimum period of 6 months in the year 1990 was permitted to establish a refinery baseline to produce gasoline similar to that in the year 1990. The consequences of the act was that a refiner was permitted to use any of the methods namely using the quant quality and volume of the gasoline produced in 1990 or the data of the blend stocks and records of the gasoline in 1990. In the event that confirming through the first method is impractical and unachievable or thirdly the data on the quality of the blend stocks of gasoline post 1990 and this method may be used only when confirming to the any of the above two methods is impractical for the refiner. The issue of this was that domestic producers were permitted to use any of the three methods. Consequently, Venezuela and Brazil urged that the Clean Air Act had violated the principle of national treatment because it imposed different and more stringent conditions for foreign producers. As a result, foreign producers interested in exporting gasoline to the United States were required to make expensive changes to their refineries in order to comply with the first method. The findings of the panel. The panel noted that imported and domestic gasoline as similar in physical characteristics and its end uses. In addition, the Clean Air Act was a law by virtue of Article 3, Clause 4 and created certain rules and requirements to be followed, failing which defaulters would face a penalty. To this end, the panel requested the US to bring its law in conformity with the international obligations under Article 3, Para 1 and Paragraph 4. The implications of Article 3, Paragraph 4 on the Korea brief dip dispute. The panel analyzed a Korean law requiring two retail distribution systems for the sale of beef, one for imported beef and the other for domestic beef. Accordingly, a specialized imported beef store can sell only imported beef while another retail can sell only domestic beef. A supermarket may however sell more both domestic and international beef. The dispute was that post 1990, Korea promulgated a dual retail system whereas retailers had to choose the type of beef they desired to sell 
domestic or imported. In the result, most retailers prefer to sell domestic beef, hampering the sale of imported beef. Gradually, a new retail system was incorporated to provide for the sale of imported beef. The new retail system nevertheless resulted in merely approximately 5,000 shops selling imported beef as against approximately 45,000 shops selling domestic beef. The findings in this dispute was that the panel in this case held that the treatment according to imported beef with the, do with the introduction of the dual retail system by the Korean law and regulation is less favourable than the treatment given to like domestic beef, a finding that was upheld by the appellate body. Now we would proceed to understand internal quantitative regulations and article 3 clause 5. The principle of national treatment provided in the GATT 1947 additionally prohibits the application of internal quantitative regulations. In other words, in the event a contracting party of the GATT mandates an importer to use a certain amount of domestic product as intermediates during the production of the final products, the former would said to have violated the principle of national treatment. To this end, the principle prohibits a contracting party from making it mandatory for importers to make use of the domestic supplier either as specified amounts or proportions as part of mixing, processing or use of the products. The exception to paragraph 5 is that the application of an internal quantitative regulation by a contracting party by means of screen quotas for cinematograph films is permitted and does not lead to a violation of the principle of the national treatment under the GATT 1947. Screen quotas are quotas that are applied by domestic industry for exposed cinematograph films stating that domestic films must be run for a minimum number of hours per year per theatre in order to protect the domestic cinematograph industry. The allocation among external sources of supply and Article 3, Clause 7. While the previous section dealt with the existence of internal quantitative regulations in order to support and allocate sources from the domestic industry, Article 3, Clause 7 pertains to the allocation amongst external sources of supply. In other words, the difference lies in the fact that paragraph 5 pertains to allocation amongst domestic sources, whereas paragraph, 5, paragraph 7 pertains to allocation amongst foreign suppliers. What is government procurement as an exception to the principle of national treatment in the GATT 1947? Government procurement is based on the postulation that governments may have their own preferences in certain matters essential for the purpose of governments such as rail, roads, airline, etc. and may in the process hire its own choice of suppliers. Article 3, Clause 8 of the GATT gives due recognition to this need of the governments by stating that the principle of national treatment is not applicable to laws, regulations or requirements governing the procurement by governmental agencies of the products that are exclusively for governmental use and not for commercial resale or even for use in products that are commercially sold. The exceptions to paragraph 8 are that government procurement has been given a legal effect by means of a law regulation or requirement as a result of which such government agencies decide to buy products in violation of the principle of national treatment for instance by procuring by exclusively domestic suppliers 
or by insisting that certain amount of imports cert contain a certain amount or certain percentage of domestic products as intermediates. However, such government procurement is only permitted when the government agencies procure the products for government purposes and not for reselling the product so procured in the commercial market. Secondly, the governments of contracting parties of the GATT 1947 are permitted to provide subsidies to domestic producers only by means of payments of such that such government may have received by means of internal tax and internal charges that were collected in compliance to the second paragraph. For instance, a government of a contracting party, assume India, is permitted to provide subsidies by way of a loan or payments, etc., to exclusively domestic producers of certain goods, assume cars or food grains. With this, we have understood the various nuances of Article 3 of National Treatment. We have understood that Article 3 understands what a like product is. It defines a like product as the meaning which was given in the border tax adjustment dispute. It thereafter also applies to like products and products that are directly competitive or substitutable. Other nuances of Article 3 are government procurement and also include government procurement. Thank you.